Um, uh, if uh, if you don't have too much noise going on where you are at, feel free to unmute so that you can talk, respond, whatever you need during this class. So, um, my name is Master Raven Main. Um, I uh, I'm from the Kingdom of Aidenvelt. Um, I've been probably doing Scrabble work since I started, probably like in the late 90s. Um, and I've been doing Scrabble stuff like ever since. Um, I started in a way that um, when I was in the, started in the SEA, I wanted, SEA was great. I really lo loved it and I jumped in with both feet when I found it. So um, I all automatically tried to figure out how to give back. So I did with service and stuff and doing uh, scrolls at that time. Uh, was something that uh, I felt I could do. Um, I uh, but back then when I started, it was uh, in our kingdom. It was all um, copies, so you just printed off a scroll and then signed it. So um, we've come a long way since, at least in our kingdom, since then. So we already do a lot of stuff on. Uh, permit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you um, the the best way I can uh, I can exp try and explain this. The way I, I do shading um, is a, a watercolor kind of uh, method of how to how to shade. Um, uh, over time, I realized that it was uh, for those who I've I've been able to show people this particular method and uh, that don't do scribal because of the fact that it takes too long. Um, they paint a little section, uh, you know, at a time and it, and it, it sometimes, you know, it takes months for them to do one scroll and they're just, they don't want to do it. So I taught them these kind of shading techniques for at least for illumination wise. Um, and they're able to uh, actually see the scroll, at least what it's going to look like a little bit faster than normal. So that's what I'm going to show you today. So there's a few um, um, lifter, lifting, layering, blending, and reverse color wash. So those are the, the majority of the ones that I use. Um, I used, I've used all of them on, on the same scroll. I've used, you know, just one. It's just a combination. Whatever works for you. Um, since the last, since I wrote this last time, I this handout, which I'm going to add to the chat. Um, I realized that uh, every time I do this class, I, I, uh, I realize I have to show people what feathering is. So uh, I'm going to, I still need to add it to my handout, but I'm going to show, uh, after we get started here real quick, I'm gonna, gonna show you that what feathering is if you don't know what feathering is when it comes to painting. So um, first of all, when you're doing this kind of stuff, you wanna, you know, with any illuminated manuscripts, you want to be uh, cognitive of where your light source is coming from. Um, for if you, if you, if you're not a scribe. Um, it just helps the eye uh, focus, start on the area, uh, on the, on the right point on illuminated manuscripts. That's what is usually why, the reason why for illuminated letters is to bring your eye to a certain spot. So if everything's shaded in that direction, every time you look at an illuminated manuscript page, your eye will automatically go to the top left. So you want all of your shading of all of the, everything that you paint on that scroll to have the same shading. Um, I haven't really noticed it in historical wise if there was anybody that did it differently, but there probably had to be somewhere. But if I've looked at uh, scrolls from in the SCA where it kind of looked odd and I couldn't figure out why, and I realized that they, uh, one of them shaded in, in, the, in the reverse direction and it kind of, it just looked odd and I couldn't, you know, until I figured that out, I could, you know, I wasn't realizing how they shaded it. So I always, it's usually top uh, left corner is where, where you want everything, your light source to be coming from. Um, 
for this class, if you're painting along, um, you'll need a small uh, container of water. Uh, two pieces of paper towel will come will come into play later on. I'll show you why. Um, at least one paintbrush. Um, I use uh, what's called an angle brush, um, but you can use any kind of brush that you want. Um, the reason I use angle brushes more than anything else is because I can control the width of the line of paint. Um, um, so that's that's pretty much what I use, but you can use any. So I'm going to switch my camera so that I can start showing you stuff, what I'm doing. Hopefully it works. Hey, it worked. Okay. So this is the kind of brush that I normally use. You, like I said, you can use any brush that you want, but I use this one only because uh, what I was about to say is that I can use it as a fine point. Just use where the, the very, very tip. Sometimes I, when I paint, I, I usually pick up paint just with that little tiny tip um, to give me enough paint to use all over, or I can make you know a wide, or I can make a thin line. So that's why I use that. But that's why I use those ones. Um, you can use a palette of some sort. When I teach this class, I actually uh, I don't have the whole book with me, but uh, there's this is actually palette paper um, most of the time because you know when I'm doing a class, it's real you know the, I don't want to give everybody a palette and then have to clean all the palettes. So this is just literally palette paper, which is uh, regular paper and it has a really soft surface. That's what I'm going to be using today. Um, it's really kind of, you know, it's disposable for my class. So that's what I use for that. But you can use anything. Um, gouache paint. Um, after you uh, if you get in really indescribable, you realize that each gouache paint um, is different. Um, everybody has, if, uh, what I'll mention real quick at the beginning of this class, if you look at anybody's scribble kit, majority of the time no two scribble kits are going to be exactly alike so everybody has their own preferences they want to use um i usually for this class will buy a set of you know regular gouache whatever i can find and then i'll give it to a brand new scribe by the end of the class so um the also the the only drawback i guess from this particular way of painting is your paint will last a lot longer if you use these uh, shading techniques um for paint that's not always a great idea because i've had paint i've used for years and i couldn't you know after after so long you just can't sometimes you can't reconstitute it so i try and make sure that my paint is ever re, you know revolving uh, in and out so and then watercolor paper um is uh, i use um i usually paint on pergamonata um but you can uh, there's a lot of people that uh will paint on you know uh watercolor paper they'll play on a bristol board you know crystal board whatever whatever works for you so um i suggest trying as many things out as possible to find out what you do and do not like rather than starting a project and then realizing you hate that kind of paper um i can tell you right now most of the calligraphers that i know um hate anything besides pergonata because pergonata uh which is a simulated uh, vellum or animal skin what they used in history historically um, it's really hard to fix mistakes and some of the paper that, uh, like the Bristol board and the watercolor paper gets clogged in the, in the calligraphy pen. So, uh, that's, that's what the, I'm not a calligrapher, if I haven't mentioned. Um, I do calligraphy, but it's, it's drives me nuts. Um, so what I usually tell people now is to pick, uh, two different color kinds of, paint. So what I usually do is I usually pick, normally I usually pick, but you can pick whatever. Um, I pick a yellow and uh, a green. It doesn't matter what kind of green. I get. So you can tell I, I, these are two different kind of brands. So this kind of stuff doesn't really matter too much, but um, these are just two that I picked up. I have no idea. Um, they're just regular brush paints, but I try and pick at least two different contrasting colors. One a little darker, and when a little lighter for this exercise, it'll, it'll give you a better idea of, of shading because for shading, you need to know the difference between light, you know, see, be able to see better the, the difference between um, light and dark. Now, at the end of this handout, if you print out this handout, at the end, there will be two different things. There will be um, a page, which you'll be able to see this. 
This is this will be at the end of the page that you can print out um, on watercolor papers, which I did, or um, you can print on regular paper. And in my last class, when I taught this, um, it'll if you print this on a regular piece of printing paper um, that you get in, you know, in any printer, um, and use to practice these shading techniques on them, um, it'll be a good way to try and see how well you're controlling your water. Because a lot of these uh, watercolor uh, type methods that I use, you really need to control your water. Um, if, if you're a scribe or, if you're not, um, water control is, is, is very important because if you do too much, it will buckle and it'll make it harder and it will not look good. Um, so, you, and if you, you know, you want to make sure that you, you know how to do it. So if you did this, if you printed this on a regular piece of paper and did practice these, I'm going to show you these shading techniques, you want to do it so that the paint, the, I don't know if you'll be able to get paper that 100% doesn't wrinkle, but, um, if you get it so that, you know, as you go, if you keep practicing, you'll be able to see, you know, less and less, you'll realize how much water you're actually using if you mix it in with your paints to make it the right consistency. So that was just a general thing that I found out myself. So um, this will be on the, at, like I said, on the last page of the hand, one of the last pages of the handout. The other one is this. Um, this is also on the last page of the handout. Um, this is just gives you an idea to think about when you're shading of where the light is coming from, where the dark is, the gradual light and dark and how, how it looks on different objects. Um, this will just kind of help you get an idea of where, where you want to go. And sometimes you might need it to, you know, to, to get an idea of what you want the ultimate and item to look like. Um, this is a side note so too, is that, uh, if you don't, the color wheel is great to have um, when you're trying to figure out what, you know, what colors to use. Um, I, like I said, I normally pick for this class yellow and green, but you could pick yellow and violet or, you know, or uh, complementary colors. But um, I also use this in a lot of instances where I'm painting a scroll and I'm kind of lost on what colors to use. Sometimes just really just looking at the color wheel, trying to figure out what looks best usually kind of helps me out. So, uh, feathering. So I'm going to kind of show you how to do feathering real quick. Um, just get a little bit of paint out. Most of the time when you're painting any kind of scroll, you really don't need that much paint. So I'll try not to. Use my palette for that. Like I said, I use um, most of the people I, that I have seen um, will use this. They'll use they'll probably use more paint than this, and they'll use this directly. This as is right out of the tube, um, directly from here onto the scroll. Um, that covers uh, an area quite quickly, um, but it uses a lot of paint. So if you'd rather not, you don't have to, but you know, that's what normally you see a scribe will use, we'll use the last step. Um, when you get into period paste, you're gonna be using uh, a tinting technique, which I'll show you later. Um, so what you're gonna do for this, you're just gonna get your brush damp as much as possible. And you're gonna put a little bit of water where, where you want the paint to eventually go. So not on the paint, but just kind of where you want it to go. And then this is, again, why I use an angle brush, if you can see that. Um, you're just gonna grab just a little bit on the very tip of the brush. And this is a feathering technique. You wanna get it out like this. It looks pretty simple, straightforward, basic. Then you wanna clean up your brush and with one of these techniques I'll show you. And this is, I'm just showing you the brush technique and you wanna always have your arc that you're painting with your hand, like for your, whatever hand you use, you'll be able to notice that where your wrist pivots, that's where you're gonna to want to do it. So 
say I wanted to uh, I wanted to paint on the other side in a circular motion, I wouldn't do it from this angle. I would flip it around and then I would use it from this angle to make that arc, natural arc. You don't want to fight your body in its natural, the way it naturally wants to go. And your wrist naturally wants to go in an arc shape. So if you do it this way, you want to do it from this side. So that's basically shading techniques. So you're just trying to get a little bit of paint at a time. Okay, so um, I will, I, when you, also another thing to, it's probably not in here. Um, when you're painting in calligraphy with, or uh, illumination of paint or any kind of paint, um, is that there's not a whole lot of paint on here, but what you want to do is you want to make sure that every time you clean off your brush, you want to clean off with a paper towel first and then stick it in the water and then clean it from that way. Um, Cause you're trying not to put paint back in the water. So the little paint that goes in the water is better. So I do not always do that because I paint sometimes really super fast. I try not to do that. So let me pour out, let me get my other paint out. Since I already painted on this, what I'm gonna do, I'm going to use that. I have a tons of paint since, since this uh, latest thing happened. I have a lot of paint that I am going to try and give away soon because as I mentioned in class, these things have been gone by now. So I'll I'm overstocked on gouache paint right now, which is not a bad thing because some places are actually running out of paints, believe it or not. Okay. So the first one is lifting. Um, what you're gonna do with this is you're going to put just a little bit, you're gonna put, yeah, you really use that, I probably should have used belt, like I said. Um, you're going to try, what we, a lot of times that we'll try and describe is to try to get your paint to a melted ice cream uh, consistency. So, you want to add a little bit of water to it um, just to get it, you know, to that way before you start painting stuff. So I did yellow, which I did not want to do. Let me try to go back. This is better if you use the dark color. Um, uh, this particular method of lifting. Now lifting is a, a great uh, general, like I mentioned before, general just method to use because um, it helps you get off paint without necessarily having to have to scrape it. So for this one it's lifting. Now if you notice I did everything in a circle because it's the easiest thing I could I could imagine. Um, and I put a little sun in the top left corner. Sometimes people paint it in my class. If it helps, it helps. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're just going to paint the entire circle one color, however you wanna do it. Um, I also do mention in this class that actually doing this, even though normally scribes rather not paint outside, doing this kind of uh, painting, uh, for this class, I'd like, I'd rather be outside. Um, the only reason is that um, for a lot of these methods, you want to have a drying time. So you wanna have, like for this instance, you wanna have, um, you wanna be able to paint it. And then you wanna have to go back, uh, you wanna to move on to all of the different steps for all of these shooting techniques, you wanna have um, drying time in between. So I have a little fan on right at the moment to help. So um, out here in Arizona, it gets hot a lot. So when I do this class, even remotely outside, it doesn't matter. Or in Arizona, generally it doesn't matter because uh, things dry faster, you know, sometimes before they even get off the brush faster. Um, 
But when it's cool out here, which for us cool is like 60 degrees, um, Bill uses it as a fan to try and get this to cool down. While I'm waiting for that to dry, I will tell you what you need to do with the paper towels. All right, so you will need to get a paper towel, uh, roughly, doesn't matter what size. And what you're gonna do with this paper towel, put it aside. What you're gonna do is you're gonna, you're gonna take this paper towel and you're going to fold it. You're gonna attempt to get it to a small little square. Or a rectangle, whatever you, want, whatever you want to do, however you want to do. For me, it's a little hard to manipulate my hand, so I may, I'll do what I can. So, once this is dry, which this is mostly dry, you're going to uh, get your paintbrush damp, okay? I mean, you don't want to get water onto your manuscript, so you want you want your paintbrush to be wet, but not dripping wet. Okay. Not where the water drips onto your whatever you're doing. So what you're going to do for this, and the reason why I do again, why why I do circles for this particular glass, is because wherever you are shading, you want to you want the light or glint that's coming off to be the same shape. So if this was a square, it would be a a very sharp corner. Um, then we're going to be taking this paint off. But since this is round, what I'm going to be doing, so with one hand, you're going to have the, the paper towel in it. The other one, you're going to be just take water and you're going to rub it around in the shape of just in the corner there. And then you're going to take this paper towel, okay? And you're going to go directly down to soak it up and directly straight back up. Very simple, pretty fast. Um, way of doing things. Um, and you can kind of almost automatically see, this is more of a, I guess they would call it cartoonish, but you know, section, you can go back over it. You can kind of, uh, so it's not so sharp. But again, you want to go directly down, directly, not, do, do not use the same side. That's why you have to fold it in all these corners. So you want to do it. So if I was going to do it again, I'm going to use a clean side, go straight down, dab it, and straight back up again. Never using the same side twice um, because you're going to end up putting paint back down on your paper and you don't want that. You don't want to do that. I'm also have a better example. So, uh, so that's ultimately that's what it should look like eventually. Um, like I said, you just feather the corners, feather the sides, keep taking out paint. If you want to, you can add more dark to the, to the other side, but this is pretty fast and easy. Um, also, if you put too much paint down and you want to get it back, you know, you're, instead of scraping it off, you can. I'm saying you can't, uh, but this is another technique. Only if you've at least... Uh, closely mastered the, you know, using water because you don't want to put too much water on. Um, if it's too, you know, just do it for a little while. If you use this technique, just use, do it for a little bit and let it dry before you try and do some more to it. Don't keep working at it, otherwise you are going to, uh, the paper is going to start to crinkle and uh, that one section is going to get over damp. So with anything, when you're doing a lot of scrabble stuff, make sure that you, you leave some time to dry it. So. But that is the first one. And I'm going to get a uh, PowerPoint eventually, probably. All right. Now, this one is layering. Okay. Um, for this particular one, um, I usually try and, uh, I don't know if ever anybody, if, from out here, we use they, you. You'll see it more like in a cactus, but like in the gift store, what they'll do is they'll cut out a different different shapes of cactus and piece them all together, and they'll be um, 
because when you do when you when you look through a piece of glass it looks like it's clear but if you do put lots of panes of glass together you realize after a while you'll get a green tint so for this particular one um, it's called layering so layering is also what they use a lot in, um, in historically um, because of the fact that a lot of paints um, that we use are opaque so to get the color that you want um, it takes a lot so I mean you can paint a whole thing and then you're gonna have to uh, go over it and over and over again to get the color that you want so what you want to do for this one is again get your paint wet or your paintbrush wet and your paint well um, you get your paint damp get what you want to do for this one is I call it dirty water, but um, for this you just want to get you just want to get the water on uh, the paint to be almost as opaque as you possibly can. So you want to get like a good coloring paint, and you're going to paint the entire thing one light shade or tint of color. So however you want to do that. The entire thing, one tint of color. And like I said, a lot of the historical, a lot of the period pigments, the natural pigments are opaque. So it does for you to get the right color tick, you know, color on your on your scroll um, for the period pigments. Anyway, you're going to have to you're going to have to use this. Um, they don't use, necessarily use this for, uh, always use this for a shading. Sometimes they just literally use this the way to paint scrolls. Um, uh, you can actually use something similar to this and see if you, you know, if the colors are too different, you can see if that's the right color you want to use. Again, um, a lot of these, uh, for a lot of these things, you want to make sure that it's uh, dry when you're doing this kind of practice and stuff. So I'm in Arizona, even in November. There's more humidity on my piece of paper than in the air. So once you do that, again, keeping in mind that this is the light part and then this is the dark part. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get some more paint this time. Again, what I call dirty water, but this is the consistency of your, your water and your cup after a while, you know, because you when you keep painting the same color all the time. So you want to do this and then just over it, you have to picture this in thirds, so or in quarters. So what you want to do is you're gonna leave the top quarter alone and you're just gonna shade in three quarters of it. So this looks a lot better once you give it more drying time. I'm not gonna paint over the entire thing, just the last three quarters of it like this. You're gonna have to make your paint a little bit more dirty. Following the shape of the item. Okay. Um, I think you have you can see it. It's easier for me to see so the camera is not really going on. So then you follow the shape. Again, like I said, item. And you let that dry. This will help me out without blowing everything out of my way. Now, if I was doing this on a scroll, I would do these, you know, maybe the first one, let it dry. The second one, let it dry. Um, you know, I would do this in sections, so I wouldn't be doing it as fast as I am even doing it now. So, and I'm only doing this because I don't want to kill the paper too much, but otherwise, you won't see that. So, when that's dry, again, 
clean your brush off, paper in the water. And uh, I'm going to get some more, another tint of paint on there. This one, see? This. And now you're only going to paint half. So I'm going to paint this half. Okay. All trying to follow the shape of whatever you're painting as much as possible. This is just a tint of paint, but as you can see already, just using tints over and over again, over the same section, you can see how it's going from dark to light, or light to dark. I'm gonna try and get this dry real quick. Um, like I said before, some most of the time they use this to, you know, fan themselves if we're doing it outside or even sometimes inside it gets a little bit warm. So everybody just fans, fans themselves and try and get this as dry as possible for this class. Uh, it's probably not a good idea to use it with an actual paper when you're doing scrolls. Um, well, even a fan might be a problem too because you don't want to do this if the paint's too wet. Otherwise, you're going to push the paint right off the whatever you're painting. So always be careful when you're doing this kind of stuff. So the last step for this one, you're going to the damp brush back into, I'm just going to keep going to dirty water because I like, I'm going to keep going. And then you're going to go over the last quarter of it. You may not be able to see this too much. I got to make it dirtier just so that you can see. Now I can see this, so I'm gonna make, might have to use a little bit more paint just to make sure that you can see the difference. Maybe you can kind of see the difference there. Um, so this is the next one, this is layering. Now like I said, this is what they use mostly historically, the opaque uh, paints that we all have to use. So I will show you, I think I did pretty good. I have an example one that I use all the time, so. So it's not too bad. But as you go, more practice, you get better uh, and control of the water. So but that's lifting. Um, if I, I think it's my said this before, but if the, or layering, sorry. Um, next one is blending. So now this is where a lot of the feathering kind of comes into play. So, um, but this is, this, the, using this, uh, this instruction he is meant to just so that you can kind of get a better idea of, of just light and dark paints, I guess. So I'm gonna get light paper. So what you're gonna do for this one, damp brush, um, you're going to paint, um, it's, for this particular one, if you if you can, I am sometimes very lazy when I paint cer certain things because I want to paint as fast as I can. Um, is you might want to use two brushes for this particular lesson. Um, we'll see how it goes. Let's see how badly I mess it up. So what you're going to do is you're going to paint the top left side with a pretty not dirty water the ice cream consistency of the paint and you're going to paint that on the light side so a lot of the times you're going to paint um, and I'm, you're going to paint a lighter color um, most of the time you're going to use you're going to use complementary colors because that way you can see the light and the dark better and it's better it's supposed to be a better conveyance I think but you're going to put a pretty good uh, thick amount of paint on one side of your circle. And for this lesson, if you if you want to, you could probably just be a little bit thicker. Because what you're going to do is ultimately is you're going to pick a lot of this paint. You're going to be pulling from this paint. So get the top left as full of paint as you can. 
Again, if you can dry it fast too. It doesn't really perfectly dry, but I'm going to try and do that. Hopefully, I get enough paint down there. And after you with another brush, or if you can clean your brush off good enough. And now, normally, I would turn this piece of paper, but not for this class, because normally I would turn it to get this side. So I'm going to load my brush up with green for this. And I'm going to paint the dark side, the dark side of the circle. So hopefully the yellow is drying when I'm trying to do this. So I'm going to be laying a pretty thick amount of paint again on that dark side. As I mentioned before, when you're doing this kind of a thing, you might want to try and you know move the paper around or move the scroll around so that way uh, your wrist is moving in that right angle when you're doing circles. You don't have to, but sometimes it helps. So, Let's see how this works. You're not moving the paper around. You want to, like, like I say, lay a pretty good thick line of paint just on that bottom corner and let it dry. So, um, again, this is uh, this is actually quicker than most methods that you use or that are used for doing scribal stuff. So I don't know if this little fan is helping or not, but we're going to keep doing it. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of this class, again, you can use one of these, whatever works. So I, like I said, I've used all, all of these methods when I paint scrolls. Um, you don't have to just use one, whatever works, because what you're trying to do is you're trying to get a final product done. So you're going to do whatever you can to make sure that, you know, you get it done. So you're, you're going to do whatever, whatever works, whatever's best. Um, if you practice the layering um, and water control, water control is really important. I haven't stressed that enough yet. Um, but that's, that's what we all have to do. Um, in period, I don't believe they used water in their scrolls as far as, but they had animal skin and the animal skin doesn't soak up water. Um, so um, it would have to be re-drenched or, you know, in a tanning process. So when you're using actual, actual vellum or actual animal skin to paint on. Um, even the pergonata is a vegetable uh, base but it's vegetable based uh, and it's pressed together in layers. So uh, it's the best simulated vellum that I can recommend. If you haven't done, that'd be great. If, uh, if, if you can, like I said, in the beginning of this class, always practice on different kinds of things just to see what it's like. So uh, the more experience you have with different things, you will will have a better idea of what you actually do like and what you actually don't like. Some people are very uh, in different places when you're doing scrub work, only can get only can get Bristol board or only can get watercolor paper or only can get certain kind of paints. And that's what they learn with, so that's what they do. But if you ever get a chance and have enough money or enough time or something to share your stuff with, practice on different kind of stuff. So what you're gonna do again with a, a damp brush, is what you're going to do is you're going to put kind of just a line of water right here. So, ooh, that really soaked in fast. So, and then you're just going to want to get a little bit of that yellow, not all of it, just on the very edge of that yellow, you're going to be pulling that yellow down. Looks better in the camera than it does right now, I mean, actually. So, what you're going to do is you make these little circles. And you're just going to be pulling a little bit of the yellow, just a little bit. Now you may have to clean your brush off and go back and do it again, depending on how this works. So you're going to go back and you're going to the damp brush. What you're going to do is now you're just going to pull. You're going to start from here, okay? And you're just going to pull what you already pulled down. 
okay, with your this line of paint. You're not going to pull from here anymore. So what you're doing is you're gradually taking this paint and you're doing you're doing this kind of a thing, but in one stroke and in, in these small strokes. So you want to take this paint slowly down this direction. So you're just going to paint the, put water where you want it, where you want the paint to eventually go. I'm trying to pull that paint down. And I probably didn't put enough yellow down is why that doesn't look as well as it should. Ah. I'm kind of looking at the camera too, so I'm trying to get this so you can actually see it better. Just enough. So that you're getting like a tint of, of this farther down. And you're going towards the center, not to the center, but towards it. That's not too bad. Could be better. All right, so now you're going to clean your brush off or get your other brush, the damp brush. See if I can, hopefully, this works. And you're going to put water where you want the paint to go. The water reconstitutes. Gosh, and you want to try and get just work on the edge of it because you just want to get a little bit of the paint. You want to get a lot of the paint, you just want to get a little bit of the paint from that where you laid that down. So you still have a dark, and you still have a somewhat light, but um, a light consistency. So you just want to get a little bit. Brush off. Again. A lot of the stuff you need time to dry. You might want to do these in a lot of steps or different areas rather than concentrating on just one section. And then the damp brush, you're just gonna, you want the paint to go here. So you're just gonna pull this edge. Always fighting everything, fighting the water, fighting the air, fighting, fighting, yeah, fighting the, you know, drying time. Show you a better example. My example is not working very well. I have to keep working on it. I don't want to do that for this class. So I'm trying to get. So basically, what you're going to do is ultimately you're going to leave this one section in the center white or as light as possible. So even though this this contradicts a lot of stuff that I've been saying about light source. This is just one way of doing it. So um, if you, you know, for paint wise, this is so that you're using a lot less paint. Um, and so that the shine section is from the side, but they do use this. This is more of a, a drastic way of painting something. So the light source is here, but if you just moved it over just a little bit more to be on this side, it would still give the same uh, look of, you know, light coming off, but this is more of a, a way so that you can just see this way of doing uh, of, of, of shading. So this is blending shading. Um, it's not used a whole lot, but it is a technique that people do use to get um, uh, the light source to come from certain sections. So as in, as, again, with all of these, as long as you're doing it from all one direction, that's all that matters. Well, at least from where the, the light source is coming from. So. My old example. That's more drastic. You can kind of you better see that. I use I use this one because this is what I messed with the most. So I go back and I I try and feather things out and I go with clean brush, damp brush, and I kind of move some paint around and you know keep fussing with it, letting it dry, fussing with it, letting it dry, so that I get um, that look to it. So. Um, this just actually shows a more uh, where the light is really super, you know, exaggerates where the light is coming from rather than a white. Sometimes when you're doing this, you want, you want to have an idea what the shape that you are painting. So sometimes leaving the top left corner of what you're shading is, if you make it too light, it kind of disappears. So depending on what the shape or whatever you're painting looks like. So this might be best used for that.
So the next one is the one I use the most. Um, and that is, I called it my technique only because I didn't know there was a word for it. But someone who took uh, painting in college, he got a degree in fine arts, uh, told me that this is a reverse color wash. I'm not sure that was, I explained that as much as you know. Now, if you notice, uh, also, there's a lot of words. <laughs> uh, what I mean by that is, I, if you've ever had the chance to write a manual or write instructions on anything, the simplest thing you could think of to write instructions on, you'll understand what, how, how, how the process of that is. And this is something easily done, but to write it all out specifically so that somebody could read this without me there and be able to understand what I'm talking about. It takes a lot of instruction to do something as simple. So reverse color wash, this is similar to um, kind of what we did before um, to a lot of different techniques that I did before. So let's see if I can get, do this one correctly today for this class. So for the green, um, I'm just going to get the green as well as I possibly can. And I want to get a lot of paint, as much paint as I possibly can get on this brush. And I have to use a little bit of water just to get it so that it flows. But for this class, I'm going to, for this uh, section, um, you just want to get as much paint as you possibly can. Get it on this one section there. load it up as much paint as you can get on there and sometimes if you can do this and then let it dry and then just cake some more paint on there because basically what you're doing is you're trying to get this on here as much as possible so I might put a little bit more than I usually do or after that last little lesson I don't have enough paint on there try and get as much paint as I can on this little section. Now, uh, this, I, this technique I used a lot. Um, and the reason I use this technique a lot is because uh, when I was younger and I really wanted to do a scroll, but I can't, couldn't take my, uh, my painting kit where I was working, I couldn't take my painting kit to work. Uh, or do the, you know, the whole painting kit. So what I would do is I would take a scroll, uh, usually I'm uh, Bergmanata, and I would paint, uh, I would get an idea of what I wanted to paint on my scroll. So whatever was on there, I pick my colors for, you know, all the different items of what I wanted to paint. And I would put a, a big thick line of paint in the corner, in the dark side of the corner, uh, dark corner where I wanted the darkest color to be. Or more of paint. I forgot. Anyway, um, I would do that to the entire scroll. I would sit uh, one of those in, in a scriptorium. One of the last scrolls I probably did for the scriptorium is I would go, take a scroll and I would look at all of it and I would paint all of the flowers or whatever it was. And I would take a, I know I put a thick amount of paint in uh, the, the right bottom corner of everything. So whatever I was, whatever color that was going to be, and I did the entire thing and I let it dry. And then what I would do is I would take it to work and with a paintbrush and a little bit of water, I was able to use this technique. And then uh, I would, you know, fuss with it later, but at least I would be able to get the majority of the scroll done with uh, just a little bit of water and paintbrush. And so we're going to see how well this works. It's not quite dry, but. And I'm going to actually flip this just because I'm really going to work this. So, so with a damp brush, just like with a lot of other stuff, you want to just pull a little bit off of there. And you want to feather it down. So trying to follow the shape of the item. I'm just getting this, you know, just a little bit on the border.
November in Arizona. Still dry. Well, uh, for a while, I guess. Uh, out here in Arizona, we're going to we're going to finally get rain for the for the second time this year. So we'll actually have humidity in the air. So basically, it's kind of hard to see in this this camera. But basically what you're doing is you're taking the paint slowly from this side all the way to the end. And you don't have to go all the way to the end. You just have to get close to the end. But you always want to get the section where you want paint to go. You want to get it a little bit damp. That'll just help the flow of water. And that's a that's all a shading technique. So, or a watercolor technique. Um, usually at the end of this class, this is the simplest thing you can do because it's just basically paint, water, pull, done. Okay. And you can't, it's hard to really see this one. That's pretty basically it. That's really probably about as simple as you can probably get. Obviously, you can see the bright white side of it to the dark side of it. Let me show you the one that I fussed with or anything else. You're really fussed with it. That's what you get. Um, you can put, uh, you know, I didn't for this one, but you can if you want. You can put, you know, a darker color on here. Um, you can put, you know, after it's dry, put white on this section if you want. You really want to get that brighter. But a lot, of, a lot of this. Majority of this, and like I mentioned at the beginning of the class, uh, controlling water, water control is ideal. You want to be able to control no matter what paper you work on or what paint you work on or work with. Um, that's what you want to do. You want to be able to control how much water you're using. Too much water and it, uh, it will. Ruin your paper. So that is the last thing for my class. Um, I didn't get if anybody has any questions. Let me know. Um, if you print out the handout, it actually has also my uh, my email on there. Um, I'm not sure if Trimaris is this way. There are kingdoms that don't want you to say anything. I want you to be quiet. If you feel like speaking up, go ahead and do it. Um, but you can talk if you want to. Because I'm from Mainville and you can talk anytime. Raven, could you post the handout in the chat again? Because I think a couple yeah. people join later um, and they might yeah. be able to see it. I always forget about that. There we go. Thank you. Yeah. And it is a Google Doc, which means I may mess with it later. And if you open it up later, if you know, you don't have to print it out. You can just look at it. Um, you can print it out. It's not going to change too much, but sometimes I tweak things, try to make things better. But I think I made this about as best as I can um, using doing this in a Zoom class. So. Um, let me show you the real quick. Got a couple minutes left. This is one of the reasons how I found out. I forgot to bring uh, one of these to practice on, so I actually just printed it out and I practiced on the handout for my class. So that's when I realized, hey, that's actually not a bad way to learn how to use you know, how to control your water. So, so for the longest time, I use this as my example of how eventually you're gonna, how's eventually gonna look. Um, yeah, again, just uh, whatever style or method you use, you just have to work with it over and over again sometimes or, or let it dry between fussing with it and try not to mess with it. Even when, if it gets frustrating to stop, Put it in timeout. Let it dry um, before you start. You know, before you start trying to fix it again. 
um, layering if you want to try and get some of that paint off if we got too much on um, works um, like I said layering is a historical way of doing stuff because of the opaque paints blending is not used as much but it's a style that you can use and uh, reverse color washes like I said what I use the most um, but I use every style I can to get the look that I want Thank you very much. This was awesome. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When you get the recording for you now. Yeah, this uh <laughs>